Okay, to implement a binary heap, we're going to discuss a standard uh, binary heap ADT. Uh, so to create a binary heap, we're going to have a constructor. Uh, when we get to the code, we're actually going to call it bin heap. And then we're going to have a few methods we can uh, call on objects that have been constructed. Uh, th first is how to insert into the front of the line, or into the line, and how to remove from the line. So instead of NQ and DQ, like we have for a Q, we're going to have insert, where it inserts an item into the heap. And we're going to have delete minimum, which finds the smallest item and returns it. And it also removes it from the heap. Also, we're going to have find min, which is like delete min, but it does not remove it from the heap. It just returns the minimum value, but does not remove it. Uh, it's interesting to note this method is really fast. It's uh, constant time. And the delete min and the insert are O of log of n. So they're also very fast. And then we're going to have is empty, just to check if the uh, heap is empty. So that returns a true or false. And then we have a special method called build heap, just because uh, we can do this. And we're going to see it's a very efficient operation. If you have an empty heap from a new binary heap, and you have a list of items you want to put into a heap, you can call build list or build heap on this list and it'll build the entire heap from this list of values uh, very quickly. So here's an example of using these. Uh, so this is the, uh, first of all it's already built into uh, pythons so you would just import bin heap and first we create a bin heap and then we insert a bunch of numbers and then we remove the numbers. So you can see that after we've inserted all these numbers and then we the order that we move them it gets the lowest number that was inserted and then the next lowest so you can see the bin heap works here. Now to make our uh, heap efficient uh, we're going to use a binary tree and to make binary trees really efficient you want them to be what are called balanced and a balanced tree means that they have equal levels, or as close as can be, for both the left and right subtree. So if we look at the top node, here's the left subtree and the right subtree, and you can see the height of this subtree is only one different from this subtree. If we look at any smaller subtree, so if we go to the two subtrees underneath the nine, you'll see that they're the same length. And so we want to build a uh, tree that keeps it as balanced as possible. We're going to do this by creating only complete binary trees. A complete binary tree means that every level is full except the very last level. So in a binary tree every parent has can have two children. So if we look at the root of the tree, this is level 0 here, and it's full. You can only have one root. Now, underneath the root, you can only have two children. So at the, the level one, which is the second level, there can only be two children, and they both exist. So that's full. And then if we go to level two, which is the third level, uh, we have two children for this and two children for this. Uh, so we have four total children, and that level is full. You can't add, uh, add any more. The only exception to this rule is the very last level, uh, has to be full on the left side, so you can have empty spaces, uh, but all the nodes to the left side have to be full. We're going to see because we have a binary tree, we don't have to store this three-dimensional structure in a three-dimensional uh, structure inside the computer. We're actually going to store it in a, in a linear structure. Now let's just look at some of the math involved here. So first of all, the level number, uh, the top of the tree is level 0. This is level 1, level 2, and level 3. And you can get the uh, number of nodes for each level by taking 2 to the power of the level number. So 2 to the 0th power is 1. That's how many nodes are on the first level. Uh, 2 to the first power is 2. So on level 1, there's 2 nodes. And uh, as you go down each level, there's two times the number of nodes before. So if you're on a full level n, it's going to have two to the n nodes across the entire level, if it's full. And the last level, of course, uh, isn't full, 
but it will have two to the whatever level number it is uh, raised to that level of slots.